everyone. Welcome to episode 275, Dr. Shafali and Kelly Chit Chat. Y'all, what is going on? And why am I saying y'all? Like, what? How? E- uh, what? How are we in episode 200? Like, what? Ser- mm. That's what you call being speechless. I don't even, it doesn't even make any sense. And not only are we episode 200, did you see who our special guest is today? Dr. Shafali and her work as a psychologist is the reason why. This podcast was even born because in 2014, I saw her on Oprah and I was like, wait a minute. She actually makes a lot of sense with what she's saying. This seems so sensible and so reasonable. And this is how I teach. And I, this is how I counsel at school. But why can't I do it at home? And why is my voice so screechy? I'm not really sure. And I was like, wait a minute, let me get her book. And I stumbled upon her book. And it was the hour version, like a summary of it. I didn't even know it wasn't the real book. It was guideposts. And I remember her saying, your child is born with their own throbbing spirit. They are here to teach you where you need to grow. And I was doing, I always say this, I was doing body beast. I was doing chest. Body beast is a workout program with weights. I was doing chest laying on the floor of our den. And I almost dropped the weights on my head because in that moment, that enmeshment and codependency was split in half and I realized Lily and Grady were separate from me. They came from me, not through me. I didn't have the word power to say all that, but I just knew in that moment something had changed. It pierced my heart like nothing else. And that's when the journey began, when I heard that one sentence. It only can take one sentence. That's why I always say, tell me your lightning bolt moments. Tell me your lightning bolt moments because those moments happen along the way. And I could have heard it three years prior. It wouldn't even resonate at all. It wouldn't even made a dent on my heart because you have to be at the right time at the right place to hear whatever words you're meant to hear. So I started sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and practicing and practicing and practicing and failing and failing and failing and then practicing some more and be like, oh, I didn't know that was there. Oh, I didn't know about the ego. Oh, I didn't know about the unconsciousness. Oh, I didn't know about the prefrontal cortex. Oh, I didn't know about the primitive brain. Oh, I didn't know about the wounded little girl inside of me. Oh, and it was just journey. It was a journey and not a destination. And it's still a journey, not a destination. Because what I'm doing with the kids It applies to spouses, mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, parents, grandparents, your greedy good grandpappy. And when you can do the work with the people within your four walls, it makes it so much easier to do the work outside of your four walls. So I was thinking who I wanted and what I wanted to do for the 200th episode. And I asked Lily and I got rejected. David was on the 100th. I was thinking, what in the world? What's, I just knew it had to be something. I knew it had to be something or someone special. And I'm not, I don't even know how to interview people. So I didn't think it could be an interview because I'm no Bob Walters. I interrupt people. I talk too much. I'm loud. I never know what to ask. Sometimes I make it all about me. So I was like, I don't really know what to do. This was around episode 190. It was kind of creeping up on me. I'm like, I still got 10 weeks. I got plenty of time. And then all of a sudden I got an email from Dr. Shafali's team that said, would you like to interview Dr. Shafali about her new book, The Parenting Map, which was, was just released right before the 200th episode. I was like, bingo, God wink, let's go. So she asked me to do an Instagram live and I was the one that was supposed to start the live and then invite her. Oh, P.S. Not only have I not interviewed anybody before, I've never started an Instagram live. I think I've been a guest before on like two people's Instagram in the last like 10 years. So not only am I going to interview for the first time, I'm also going to do an Instagram live and invite someone on. And her last name is Shafali, obviously. And, or she comes up as Dr. Shafali on my Instagram. When I went to go invite her, I almost invited the kids orthodontist Shulman. (laughs) That would have been awkward. Anyway, without further ado, here's our conversation about her book. And the reason why I love her book is because it talks a lot about being a conscious parent from both levels of applying and what to do when you drop your ego, because you drop your ego and you detach and then what, 
This book called The Parenting Map goes in great detail of things you can say, gives you word power, gives you 10 different things to say, and you get to choose your favorite one. Not say all 10, but it gives you lots of strategies. So it's lots of theory mixed with a lot of strategies and a lot, a lot of stories. And you know how I love that combination. So without further ado, here is my conversation with the reason why I became conscious, Dr. Shafali. Meet our mom, Kelly Hutchison. She is a life coach. She is a child counselor. She is a teacher. She's a parent coach. And she's a mom to us. She will teach you to stop yelling at your kids. She will teach you to get your kids to lesson. She will teach you how to never sleep with mommy guilt again. She will teach you how to be an imperfect mom. So you can help your kids be imperfect too. And And have have harmony in the home. Dr. Shafali has joined. Let's wave at her. Hello, everyone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> She's here in living color. Oh, my goodness. I love- Can you see me okay? You look so pretty. Oh, so do you. Thank you so much. I am so excited to talk about your book. And I've been talking about your work since 2014. When I read The Conscious Parent in this room, I was listening to audio and I was doing weights. And you said... Your child is born with their own thriving spirit to teach you where you need to grow. And I almost dropped the weights on my face. It was that lightning bolt moment that I realized I was so enmeshed and codependent with my kids, but I didn't know that. So you helped open my eyes and it just changed the entire trajectory of our home. So I I am so eternally grateful. But for those of you who don't know, don't know what the conscious, what it means to be a conscious parent or the ego, can you kind of go a little bit into that a little bit? Because when I mentioned that, like at a baseball game, people look at me like I'm crazy talking about being a conscious parent. Well, first, first, let me say that Kelly, you were, you were one of my first huge fans. And I, I do take credit for your, your relationship with your daughter, because your daughter gives me the credit. Yes. So, so happy. And I'm just teasing. But you really embodied the principle. So we're here to talk about the book, The Parenting Map. This is my latest book. And um, it's all about the parent realizing that they are messing the things that they want the most themselves. So we all want to raise a successful, happy, empowered child. But we don't realize how we are getting in our own way. So Mm -hmm. conscious parenting, which I teach, is about how the parent can realize that their childhood baggage, their expectations, their movie from their ego, Mm -hmm. because we are operating from our agenda, is actually blocking the connection. And you, you felt that as well, that you were so focused on raising your child to be a particular way that you were missing who your child is truly. And that's why you were causing more of the problem. Then your child was being more problematic. And then it's a cyclical domino effect until the parent breaks the pattern and you broke it in your family. I broke it right here in this room. As soon as I heard that line, it was like, we just, we just separated our, because I realized that I, I was, so my and uh, my unconsciousness came from my years of infertility of six years of trying to get pregnant. So we finally were pregnant and it was, quote unquote, my fault, according to the doctors. And, you know, it was my issue. So for six years, I told myself, you're not meant to be a mom. It's you're just meant to be a teacher and a counselor. So I remember holding Lily in the hospital and I put, you know, the family through and everybody's praying all over the world. We finally have this baby. And I remember saying unconsciously, of course, I can't mess this up. You put, you know, all these people are praying for you and six years of waiting. She's finally here. Don't you dare mess this up. And I couldn't figure out why I was so calm and patient at school. And then at home, and I was dealing with severe behavior problems at school as a teacher and a counselor. But at home, my kids would interrupt me on the phone and I turned into a crazy lady. And so I couldn't understand what that disconnect was. So, of course, I blame the children. And then they were, you know, for the first five years, I thought parenting was going to be relatively easy because I had so much experience, but I came in with such a big ego. Can you go in a little bit more about where the ego comes from, lack and scarcity versus love and abundance? 
Right. So most of us come into the parenting journey with this great inner anxiety that we have to do it right. You came into it because of infertility. Mm -hmm. Somebody else comes into it because they, you know, were were experiencing insecurity all through their life. So then this child becomes this trophy piece, mm-hmm. right? We have to create this trophy, this project, this museum piece. So anytime the child then goes against that expectation, we lose our shit. And we think it's the child mm-hmm. because the per- the parental ego is stroked by the parenting uh, mindset. The parents have been told that you are in charge. You get to do it your way. The kid needs to follow you. So then... We keep imposing our expectations on the children. Children don't like that. They bolt, they revolt, they rebel. And the more they do, then the more we get angry with them and we want to go fix them. Like somebody in the chat is writing here, he's so aggressive. Mm -hmm. Well, if he's aggressive and we keep focusing on fixing him with more aggression and control, we're going to create more aggression and more rebellion. But we don't see how we're doing that. So this ego comes from the parenting paradigm that says you have to get it right. Your children are yours. You own them. And plus our own insecurities, which then tell us, oh, my goodness, I better not fail at this. So this child becomes not a child, not a human, but it becomes a project. And the greater the fantasy, the greater the insecurity, the greater the lack the more we lose our shit, we lose Mm -hmm. our mind and we blame the child. It is not the child. And that's what conscious parenting teaches. And that's what this book, it's 20 steps in this book, how you, the parent, can change yourself and then the whole game changes. So tell, maybe tell the audience, how did things begin to change once you realized it was you? Well, I saw my, I was realizing like I was very triggered by tearful, like lots of tears because I was under the impression that kids should be happy all the time. And when they weren't, then that meant I was failing as a parent. So I used them almost as a pawn to validate my worthiness as a parent, especially out in public because I'm the teacher, I'm the counselor. So you better make me look good because you're my trophy and you're representing me versus you representing your own soul. And so when I realized my child was having a hard time versus giving me a hard time, that's when everything changed because I wasn't teaching them the tools to manage their emotions. I was just reaching, meeting their emotions with more snappy turtle. And so when you said kids don't need to be happy all the time, another lightning bolt moment went off because I was like, oh my gosh. And when they're not happy, that's okay too. The best thing I can do is normalize and validate that for them. Because me at 48, I'm not happy all the time. I remember one time I, we left the park and Lily and the Grady and both of them were just acting up and I was so embarrassed. And I remember getting in the car and going, we are the happy Hutchison's. You will be happy on the playground and let me talk to my friends. And I remember Lily in the back, three years old, she's like, I don't want to be the happy Hutchison's. And what she was saying is, mom, it's too much pressure to be happy all the time. And when I was putting all that pressure on her to be happy all the time, she was buckling under the pressure because she knew if she got upset, she was going to get in trouble. And I was going to, you know, do my, I always call myself the pointy lip mom. I was the pointy lip mom, like, you know, making that face. And so feeling that, that stress of having to be happy all the time, she wasn't able, and Grady wasn't able to express their emotions. But when we allow all of it, and I just control my side of the street, life changed forever. So can you talk a little bit about the happiness, you know, the, oh, you know, what do you want for your kids? And I just want them to be happy. How you ask at all your talks, which I love. You just lure them in and then you just swipe them. So, yeah, so we think that we're supposed to raise happy, successful children. And then we begin focusing on that like a dog on a bone. And mm-hmm. what we're trying to say, really, when we control our children like that is you do what I want. I control your moods. I control your opinions. You are not a human being in your own sovereign spirit. You are here to make me feel good. Mm-hmm. And you know, Kelly, you know from your patterns, you were the happy, cheerful, the fixer, the pleaser. Mm-hmm. So those those dark, dark, but or negative, they're not even negative. Those other feelings were suppressed in your childhood. Yes. And you just put on a mask of mm-hmm. being happy. Mm-hmm. But your children and my daughter, Lily and Maya, are so similar because they're like, I don't want to wear a mask. Right. I want to be authentic. And that was a game changer for us because we were never allowed to be authentic. We didn't allow Mm -hmm. ourselves to be authentic. So your children and my daughter awoke, awakened in us, awoke within us our own self-neglect. 
our own lack of inner acceptance. So when we focus on happiness or success, these very narrow metrics, it's because we live like that. We live according to this narrow, you know, insane perfectionism. And because we um, torture ourselves and we're not aware of our own inner conflict and torture, we put the torture onto our children. And if we have a good child mm-hmm. who listens, then if we had a mini me, we would be fine. We're like, right. just do what I say. Well, look, I survive. Mm-hmm. But it's those, it's those bad children who don't listen. They're the ones who come here to awaken us. And once we realize that, then we realize, oh, the child is neither good nor bad, happy, not unhappy. They are just human beings having moments that they have every right to have. And we don't get to control that. Right. Because the more they suppress it, it's like holding the beach ball underneath water. And that resistance causes so much tension, which actually makes them upset even more because they know they're going to get in trouble or go to time out. But we're never teaching them what to do with those tricky emotions when they do come up. Because if they just, you know, it's like we're teaching reading and we teach them lots of strategies of what to do when they get to a word they don't know. How are we doing that with children when they get to an emotion they don't know? We're not giving them any strategies and we're definitely not modeling it. Because I was pointy lips, snappy turtle. And I remember yelling at her going, stop yelling at me as she's yell as I'm yelling at her. And I was like, this is craziness. And I could not get off the crazy train until I realized I was coming from so much fear and lack. And I was so afraid of messing this up. Ironically, that's where I was messing it up because my energy was tight like this. And I was blaming the eggshells on them. And what would happen is I'd peel the banana wrong. Lily would get upset. Then I would get upset. Then David, my husband, would get defensive of me. Then we're double teaming Lily. Then Grady, Mr. People Pleaser, compliant over here is like just crying because of all the energy. And it was like we were all walking on a tight wire. And my husband was like, I'm like, I don't know what to do. And he's like, if you don't know what to do, how am I supposed to know what to do? He's in finance. And so what do parents do if they have one person showing up and then the husband or the wife is not really on board, so to speak? Well, it would be amazing if even one person showed up. Right. Okay, so... Let's just start with two people are not going to show up. It's very rare that two people are going to be conscious at the same time Mm -hmm. in the same way. So it's one person. So I often say all it takes is one conscious parent. It doesn't mean that you've made a conscious family, but you begin to change the dynamic and you begin to lessen the fear, the lack, the insecurity, the tension. It's the tension. It's the tension. It's the tension that, that it's that with putting that beach ball down that causes the explosion. And so we begin with one conscious parent at a time. Let's just start with ourselves. Mm -hmm. What can we begin to change? And that begins to create a movement within the house and within culture that uh, is phenomenal. And it's a game changer. So somebody was asking, this is the book we're talking about. This is the how to. Oh, my goodness. Have you begun reading it? Yes, I do the audio. So I'm giving this one away on the 200th episode of our podcast. Hey, so yeah, so this is the how to like, how do I actually do it? You know, you've been asking me so many parents have been asking me, and I've been resisting it, because I wanted the parents to, you know, do the work, do the work. Mm -hmm. So but after 10 years, I finally said, you know what, now I need to break it down and make it really simple. And this is a great book for fathers, you know, fathers need steps. Men in particular need a very linear way of operating. So um, this is that book. And if you've read it, if you are a supporter of conscious parenting, please leave a review because other parents need to learn Mm -hmm. that there's another way to do it. There's a whole other method to raise your children that no one was taught. I wasn't taught it. I had to come upon it. So we want to change the the landscape of parenting for generations. So I need people like you, Kelly, and people listening, one parent at a time to begin a new movement. And it really does make parenting a lot easier because you're so detached and you're only focused on your side of the street. But for five years, I was focused on their side of the street and I was all up in their business. I was over there dropping litter. I was like, you know, messing up all. And I just focus on my side of the street, make sure my litter's off my side of the street. And then what happens is David's was like, wait a minute, I don't have to go and defend. You know, I don't have to double team her because Kelly's chilled out. So if she's chilled out. Then that made him happier. And he just kind of followed along along the path because he realized like, 
this is so much easier and lighter because it's the energy that you cannot describe the change. It just feels like the entire home. It just was like, it's not perfection and you don't seek perfection. That's the beauty of it. You're okay with the tricky emotions and you're okay with the happy go lucky emotions. You're okay with all of it. And the as isness of it all that those two words played so much in my early journey. And they still do now of accepting the as is because once I realized it worked with kids, I'm like, let me become a conscious wife. Let me become a conscious daughter. It works in all of the relationships. But when you practice with the ones you're most vulnerable with first, kids and spouse, then it makes, you know, doing the in-laws or the parents or the brother or the sister, or the greedy, greedy grandpappy, it makes them all so much easier because when you do it within your four walls first, going outside the four walls, that's like cakewalk. Exactly. Exactly. So what you're really saying is that this method and somebody was asking what the old method is, the old method I call the traditional model and the new method that I describe in this book, the parenting map is the conscious model. So the old model was based on you do as I say, don't make me look bad. Everything about you is a reflection on me. Mm -hmm. I'm in full control. It's my way or the highway. And that method comes with a lot of stress. A lot of yelling, a lot of fighting, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, fear. It's a Mm fear-based model. And this model just changes everything because they can play the piano, but you're not screaming at them that they have to play the piano. And they can do well at school, but you're not screaming at them that they have to do well at school. So just that extra burden gets taken out and it creates a ripple effect. Your, Your focus is not what they do. Your focus is on how you are showing up so you can connect with them. Because when children grow up without connection, that's when everything in their life begins to falter. Children don't falter as adults because they don't know math or they don't know the topic. They falter because they feel unworthy. So this model is about raising children who feel worthy in the house. Then what they do comes after. And we're doing it wrong. The old model focuses on the doing and the achievement, but not the actual inner connection to themselves. So anyone here who's struggling with their children, take a pause. Don't ask any questions. Go grab a copy of this book because, and do all the 20 steps. Yes, there's 20 steps in this book. A lot of exercises. And then your questions will be answered because you will have light bulb moments that will change your whole parenting. So thank you, Kelly, for what you do. I know you're doing this out in the world. I'm so proud of you. Oh, and you. and that's how we need to keep spreading the movement by, by our transformation. Right. When we transform, other people transform. So yes, Andrea says I have to get the book, grab the book. Even one parent here who starts this journey will create a mass movement. So and leave a review, get other parents on board. So thank you, Kelly. Thank you all. And thank you so much. Late. It's never too late. Never. Never. (laughs) Thank you so so much. And I enjoy your book. Everybody go out and get it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting boot camp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com. And if you really want to fill up my love cup, send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.